The former Dr. Feel Good guitarist Wilco Johnson, who's 66, was diagnosed with cancer just before Christmas last year. He's been told it's terminal, but he's rejected chemotherapy, and we can talk to him now. Hello to you, Wilco. Hello. Thank you very much for talking to us. Also, we've got uh, Gary Matthews with us, 52-year-old Gary, who was diagnosed with thymoma eight years ago. That's when tumours affect the thymus gland, which sit behind the breastbone in the chest cavity. He believed he'd recovered, yet seven months ago it came back. He had an operation and was advised to have more chemotherapy, but says he can't face it again. Gary, good morning to you. Welcome to the programme. Good morning. And we'll also hear from Chris Twelves, Professor of Oncology at the University of Leeds. Welcome to you. Good morning. Wilco Johnson, tell our listeners about the time when you were told you had cancer. Um, as you said, it was it was uh, Christmas last year. Um, I, my son had actually dragged me into INA because of, I had this lump in my stomach and I'd been treating it by ignoring it and hoping it would go away. Um, so I went in and they they did the tests on me and one day went in and they they told me that I'd got cancer and that, that it was inoperable and actually I felt remarkably calm completely calm um they t they told me that uh chemo that they that they could uh, use chemotherapy and chemotherapy they told me that I had about 10 months to live and uh, with chemotherapy maybe a year. Mm. <laughs> now I know chemotherapy makes you very very ill and I thought well I'm feeling I'm feeling fit and fine at the moment how long how long will that last? And they said well maybe you've got a few months of that so I thought I just the decision was quite easy yeah. chemotherapy could could do no more than extend my life by a relatively short period and I thought I'd just rather enjoy the health that was left to me and uh and and uh have n and not have treatment mm. let the let the disease take its course and how are you feeling at the moment i'm <laughs> i'm feeling fine you see i'm sp ten the ten months have gone by and i'm i'm still feeling fine um the 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 tumor continues to grow but um i am i'm not really feeling any ill effects and um i've in fact i've i've had a wonderful year um, I, I've uh, managed to do well. As you, I, did, I did a farewell tour in uh, in April, and then at the end of that tour, I was still okay. So I spent the summer doing uh, playing at festivals in in the UK and Japan, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to be spared a bit longer to do some more recording. Um, when when the the disease will kick in and uh, do its stuff, I I don't know now. They told me I would be dead by now. Did your wife's experience of cancer influence your decisions? No, um, I, I, no. It just seemed it just, my, the decision in my case. It, it it just seemed a fairly obvious thing to do. You know, they seemed, you know, they could inflict this terrible suffering on me and maybe extend my life by a couple of months. It just didn't. It didn't seem worth it. Yeah, um, I'm I'm very very glad that I, in fact that I rejected uh, chemotherapy. As I say, I've, I've I've had a I've had a wonderful year. Travelled, you know, seeing up, seeing, looking up old acquaintances, and yeah, generally, I think that you see, you can cancer comes, it's going to kill you. And uh, you can either look at it like, you know, people often talk about a brave fight against cancer. And that's not been my way of approaching it, really. My way has been to accept mm. the the cancer, realise what, you know, that, that it, that's that's what's happening. That, that it, of any, any fight against it really is a losing battle. Yes. And rather than uh, have my whole consciousness preoccupied with trying to get rid of this thing just realizing no i i you know i, I accept what's going to happen and i'm i'm very grateful for these last few months that i've had i think you have used the phrase feeling euphoric can you explain what what you mean well i said as i said when when um when they gave me the diagnosis i, w I felt absolutely calm 
It was as if he was telling me something I'd known all my life. Mm. Um, and kind of walked walked out of the hospital in a little bit of a daze, I suppose, and uh, looked at the the sky and the trees and just uh, suddenly it just felt so wonderful to be alive and but by the time i walked home by by the time by the time i got home i was absolutely tingling with 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 the euphoria of being alive and uh i suppose you know when you uh the idea that death is imminent really makes you realize you're alive and what a wonderful thing it is to be alive and uh, i kind of I was I was going along on this high for quite some time, um, and I, I I think it's true to say that during this year, you know, my whole consciousness has changed. It might make you look at everything a little bit differently, and uh, yeah, I don't, I, <laughs> I think I'm a happier person <laughs> probably now than than I have been for years and years. Well, that's extraordinary and absolutely glorious to hear. I have to say. Gary, I wonder if you can relate to what Wilco's saying in any particular way? Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> it does uh, make you, obviously, have an old new outlook on your life. Um, it makes you realise that uh, the small things that you worry about are really no, n nothing to worry about. Uh, it makes you respect life more, uh, your family mean more to you, they're around you. And, uh, yeah, I, I can relate to that, definitely. And what did the medical professionals around you say when you refused more chemotherapy when this came back? Uh, with my, my cancer, it's uh, quite a rare one. Um, and uh, when I was speaking to the oncologist at Guy's, he, uh, he said there's no hard and fast rule because it's such a rare cancer that uh, he can't go to a book and say, yes, you definitely need to have it or no you don't need to have it he said really and truly the, the decision is down to you um but obviously we had to go away and uh, me the wife and uh, my daughter we had to sit down and have a chat and decide what we was going to do through your work you're a funeral director you meet a lot of families affected by cancer definitely did that has that influenced you um to a degree, I would say, um, it's taken the sting out of it, if you like, of, uh, of passing away. Um, it doesn't really uh, worry me as such now, mm. as much as it used to. Um, and uh, I know that, uh, you know, I've got a good family around me, and uh, whatever help I need, or, or Alison, my wife, and Holly, my daughter, they're, they're going to be there for them to help them. Mm. Wilco, I suppose, I, I don't know if you think this, but when I look at your your uh, musical career and the various things you've done, you've it feels like you've lived so many different lives anyway. Feel good, going solo, the blockheads and so on and so forth. Do you, is that fair? I, I must say that, that uh, this last year has, has caused me to obviously uh, look back on my life and I, and I have to say that I'm... I, I have had a wonderful life, and uh, I, in a way, I, I, I can I can accept things now by by thinking, well, man, you know, to to ask for more will be actually greedy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, you know, I've, I've, I'm 66. I've I've lived a fairly long life, and uh, I'm still I'm still going round and playing rock and roll and. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Um, it, I'm a happy man. <laughs> are, are there some songs, are, are there some bits of your music that, that perhaps fe that mean more to you now because of this particular experience or not really? No, I think uh, you, you, kind of, you definitely step into a different kind of consciousness. You look on everything differently. So all of my past experience and things like that, they're all in that that other world you know i call it bc you know before cancer <laughs> that was my life then and this is my life now it's kind of it's not lonely although one does feel very very alone 
but I don't feel that. I mean, um, I've got my friends and my family. I'm I'm certain that I'm certain that it's uh, it's far worse for them than it is for me. And uh, I mean, I I I lost my wife uh, nearly ten years ago to mm -hmm. cancer, and uh, the experience of seeing her die. Yes, that was that was dreadful. Mm. Um, but n now, as I say, it's my my friends and family that are suffering those kind of regrets. Mm. I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just happy to still be around. And uh, how much longer we don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I I really can't complain. We'll talk more in a moment to both of you. Wilco Johnson is with us, as is Gary Matthews. Uh, both have terminal cancer, both have rejected chemotherapy, and they've been explaining their reasons why, amongst other things. We'll hear from the Professor of Oncology at Leeds University in a moment. And your experience is welcome, of course, 0500 909 693, particularly if you have uh, decided to uh, leave chemotherapy and the reasons why. Let's bring you some travel now here on Five Live. His here are some messages, uh, particularly for Wilco Johnson. Dave has texted to say, uh, it's not just a career, Wilco. You have brought pleasure to millions. You are a special man. Uh, David for Foray on Twitter says, Wilco Johnson is on Five Live right now and being amazing. Uh, John Welsh says, Wilco Johnson being generally excellent on Five Live right now. Uh, Ollie Iron has quoted you, Wilco Johnson tingling with the euphoria of being alive after being given 10 months to live. Uh, and lots of people uh, actually inspired by your attitude. I don't know how you re react to that, Wilco. Uh, many people have told me this, actually, that, that, that they've found uh, inspiration in some of the things I've said, which, well, that, well what can I say? That, that I'm, I'm glad. But uh, my, my whole attitude and the way I've reacted to it is, is, is not something that I that I thought out it's just it, you know an immediate reaction mm. um that's the way I feel if 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 other people can find some strength in anything I've said then good some friends of mine went to see you in Camden um the other Sunday night and f they've seen you before this time they said because of your illness there was a a, a greater intensity to the they felt to the to your performance does it feel like that for you or not it's uh when we when we started playing um festivals this summer somebody somebody who's um known me for an agent actually who's uh, been familiar with me for many years came up and said he, he'd never seen me enjoying a performance so much and i think he was right you know when you when you're playing and you you realize that well one that this this might be the last one mm -hmm. you know or or you or you know that well this is this is the this is the end but and uh this it extends all across life all of this all of, all of the kicks you can get in life and that that they're all made made them all piquant by this knowledge so yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm certainly enjoying uh playing gigs mm. <laughs> in a way that i never did before let's bring in chris 12s then a professor of oncology hello to you professor good morning i know you've been listening carefully to gary and wilco um and their circumstances are particular to them of course do you understand when patients reject chemotherapy well, it, it's uh, always sobering and uh, at times inspiring uh, listening to people uh, with cancer. Uh, and these are the sort of discussions that, as an oncologist, um, I have uh, with patients on a, on a daily basis. And uh, I think what we would seek to do is to make sure that each individual patient has all the necessary information to make the right decision uh, for them. Um, we heard in the introduction that there are situations, uh, usually with cancers that have been caught at a relatively 
early stage, there are situations where chemotherapy is indeed curative. Uh, patients, uh, for example, uh, with breast cancer uh, that has spread uh, to the lymph glands, we know that, uh, there, that chemotherapy and some patients' hormone therapy can reduce by between a third and a half the risk of that woman dying of her cancer. So there, there are very real, very major benefits. The situation is, is uh, sadly different for many of the uh, uh, common adult cancers once the cancer has become more widespread. Um, we have the situation that we've, we've heard about this morning where chemotherapy would be given with the intention of, of prolonging a patient's life but isn't realistically going to give us the opportunity to cure the patient. Mm. And we would want to be sure that patients understood the limitations of what we could achieve the potential side effects, but, but I must say I, I, we wouldn't uh, want patients to be experiencing uh, terrible toxicities uh, with chemotherapy, especially in the situation where we know that we can't cure them, uh, where maintaining or improving their quality of life is of paramount importance. Uh, we'd be doing all we could to minimize those side effects, and indeed if the side effects uh, prove uh, so, so severe as to interfere with that patient's uh, getting on with their daily life, then uh, we'd have to question very much with the patient whether it was appropriate to continue. Why can it make a patient feel so ill? Uh, these are drugs which uh, don't home in uh, uh, only on the cancer cells. Uh, they, they do spread through the body. Uh, they affect the bone marrow, uh, so the blood count can fall. The patient can feel tired or experience infection. Uh, patients can get a sore mouth. They can get uh, diarrhea. Um, but uh, this this Monday morning uh, in the in the breast clinic, which I which I did, uh, I saw myself a dozen patients. Many of those patients on chemotherapy, and most of them getting on with uh, their everyday life to a greater or lesser extent. So uh, we shouldn't certainly trivialise the potential side effects of chemotherapy. And every patient must make the decision that is right for them. Um, but uh, equally, it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be correct to say that uh, that uh, chemotherapy uh, wipes patients lives out uh, for, for everybody mm -hmm. will it be the way we treat cancer for the foreseeable future do you believe I think, it, I think it will remain a, a very important part. Um, uh, some uh, 30 years ago when I started uh, as an onco uh, in oncology, uh, we hoped that the cancer drugs, the chemotherapy drugs, would become so, uh, so good that patients would no longer require surgery. And that hasn't been the case. Uh, surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy remain the most important, and, uh, important treatments and it depends on the particular type of cancer, the extent of the cancer, how we use those different treatments. Uh, we're seeing new so-called targeted drugs uh, being developed that are based on our better understanding of what makes cancer cells tick. <coughs> and in some cancers where, for example, chemotherapy really isn't very effective, such as uh, melanoma or kidney cancer, these new targeted therapies have really made a huge difference. But in other diseases, and uh, the, the cancer I treat in particular, breast cancer, uh, these new targeted therapies are very often used alongside chemotherapy because given together, uh, they are better than either used or on their own. Thank you very much for your time, Chris Twells, Professor of Oncology at the University of Leeds. Uh, Gary, how do you approach each day at the moment? Um, <clears throat> really, as it comes. Um, <clears throat> Each day uh, is a blessing, um, and um, I try to make the most of it. Mm. Wilco, what would you say when you wake up in the morning? What do you think? Well, the first thing that <laughs> happens when you wake up is that you remember you've got cancer. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know, it, tra it changes from day to day, you know. What, one thing I've, uh, that I've found is that really the, the best thing is to get, <clears throat> is to be with friends, uh, so if I'm not actually working or anything, go to, to, to go to go out down down to the railway hotel in South End where many of my friends will be gathered and and just be with people. Um, you know, you can get obviously you get uh, dark nights of the soul when you're on your own in the middle of the night, and, but well, you've got to go through that, but. Generally, I think the thing, yeah, get out and about and see your mates. Mm. Can I read some more messages to you both? Um, this listener says, they haven't left their name, my brother was diagnosed with inoperable pancreatic cancer earlier in the year and he and the rest of the family have found Wilco an inspiration. 
Beryl says, uh, I had breast cancer six years ago. I've been clear since. I had an operation and radiotherapy. But if I had been told chemotherapy would have given me six months more, I would have bitten their hands off to have longer with my children and grandchildren. Your two guests today, uh, talking on your programme today, um, are incredibly brave and they're making me cry. Um, let me read this. These guys are making me feel good to be alive, says Margie. Uh, another listener says, once again, I'm humbled by the lives of others. Inspiring to hear Wilco and Gary on the radio. And that's from Andrea in Bristol. Can I thank you both very much for talking to us this morning? It's been, it's been uplifting, which is not necessarily what I expected. But thank you so much, Wilco. Thanks for coming on the programme. Thank you. Gary, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Wilco Johnson, tell our listeners about the time when you were told you had cancer. Um, as you said, it was it was uh, Christmas last year. Um, I, my son had actually dragged me into I and E because of, I had this lump in my stomach, and I'd been treating it by ignoring it and hoping it would go away. Um, so it went in and they they did the tests on me and one day went in and they they told me that I'd got cancer and that, that it was inoperable and actually I felt remarkably calm rather enjoyed the health that was left to me and uh, and and uh, have and uh, not have treatment mm. let the let the disease take its course and how are you feeling at the moment? I'm, I'm feeling fine, you see. I'm sp ten, the ten months have gone by, and I'm, I'm still feeling fine. Um, the the, the tumour continues to grow, but um, I am, I'm not really feeling any ill effects. And um, I've, in fact, I've, I've had a wonderful year. Um, I've, I've uh, managed to do... Well, as you, I, did, I did a farewell tour in, uh, in April... And then at the end of that tour, I was still okay. So I spent the summer doing, uh, playing at festivals in, in the UK and Japan. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping to be spared a bit longer to do some more recording. Um, when, when the the disease will kick in and uh, do its stuff, I I don't know now. They told me I would be dead by now. Did your wife's experience of cancer influence your decisions? No, um, I, I, no, it just seemed, it just, my, the decision, in my case, it, it, it just seemed a fairly obvious thing to do, you know, they seemed, you know, they could inflict this terrible suffering on me, completely calm, um, they, t they told me that, uh, chemo, th that they, that they could, uh, use chemotherapy and chemotherapy, they told me that I had about ten months to live, and uh, with chemotherapy maybe a year. Mm. <laughs> now I know chemotherapy makes you very, very ill, and I thought, well, I'm feeling I'm feeling fit and fine at the moment. How long How long will that last? And they said, well, maybe you've got a few months of that. So I thought I just the decision was quite easy. Yeah. Chemotherapy could could do no more than extend my life by a relatively short period. I thought I'd just... The former Dr. Feel Good guitarist Wilco Johnson, who's 66, was diagnosed with cancer just before Christmas last year. He's been told it's terminal, but he's rejected chemotherapy, and we can talk to him now. Hello to you, Wilco. Hello. Thank you very much for talking to us. Also, we've got uh, Gary Matthews with us, 52-year-old Gary, who was diagnosed with thymoma eight years ago. That's when tumours affect the thymus gland, which sit behind the breastbone in the chest cavity. He believed he'd recovered. Yet seven months ago, it came back. He had an operation and was advised to have more chemotherapy, but says he can't face it again. Gary, good morning to you. Welcome to the programme. Good morning. And we'll also hear from Chris Twelves, Professor of Oncology at the University of Leeds. Welcome to you. Good morning.